What's up guys, Aaron Productions here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to wire up a conventional fire alarm system. <laughs> Yes, I do know that this video is supposed to be a power outage simulation, but um, I haven't changed around too many things as I expected. Um, so, we're going to be doing this instead, and I hope this video is educational to some people that don't know how to wire them if they just got a panel. You can see when we open the system up here, you can see your main board. Now, if I turn this on right now, it'll be popping up with troubles everywhere. Um, so this video is mostly going to be about MS2 features since that should be your first panel, um, usually. You shouldn't be getting like an MS5, MS10 UD for your first panel or something. Um, so MS2 and MS4 are usually good starter panels, so this is why I'm teaching you how to do it on this particular panel since I do have a couple of other panels. So starting off at the top here. You have your 24 volt receptacle power. You shouldn't need to touch that unless um, you need to use a relay, which is over here, to maybe close a door or something. Um, so, here's your NAC. You only have one NAC on the MS2. You have two NACs on the MS4. Here's your two zones or four zones, depending on if you have the MS2 or MS4. Um, I have the MS2, so there's my two zones, um, negative and positive, it's kind of backwards. And then over here we have our trouble and alarm relays, like I have my alarm relay hooked up to my 24 volt non-resettable power for this right here, instead of using the NAC, which is kind of improper. Then here you can see your main buttons and lights that tell you whatever is going on with the system. Here's the only light that you should have on normally. Okay, so starting off here, we have zone 1, zone 2. You have fire alarm, supervisory, trouble, and maintenance. Fire alarm, of course, is how many pulled or smoke detector goes off. Supervisory, you could set it to, for supervisory. Let's say there's a tamper switch on a sprinkler valve. And when somebody opens it, it'll put the panel into supervisory. It doesn't do anything. It'll just beep. Trouble. Um, resistor falls off or something. Somebody takes the smoke detector or rips off a pull station or um, a wire gets cut. Maintenance is if there's like a dirty detector or something, it'll send a signal back to the panel saying that you need a new one. Um... AC power, that should always be on. NAC disable. Um, you could do that with the dip switches, which I'll show you later. Zone disable, here's your options to disable the zone. So let's say you're um, wanting to test the zone. So you could just hit like zone 1 or zone 2. You could do them at the same time. You could just disable those. Um, for a small amount of time when you want to test the pull station since it will send the panel into alarm but it will not set the devices off. Um, NAC fault, that's if the resistor or somebody takes an alarm or pulls off an alarm or something. Um, system trouble, that should never be on, um, but it will be on if any of these are on pretty much. Um, Power trouble, that means that there's either no batteries or something's um, messed up. Maybe a ground fault, okay? Um, walk test, you hold down this button right here, and then it'll put the panel into walk test, so when you pull it, it'll just sound for a few seconds and then reset. And then you could test all the uh, pull stations in the building and smoke detectors, and it won't be blaring the whole time, and you have to have somebody at the panel to reset it every time you set it off. Alarm silence. Um, by the way, if you hit the alarm silence and walk test button for like seven seconds, you could do a silent walk test, which will put the panel into alarm. It won't beep. It'll just flash the alarm LED, and the devices won't sound good. It's in silent. Uh, but if the alarm is going off, that light would be on if you hit the alarm silence button. Here's your acknowledge alarm silence reset and walk test button. Acknowledge is the first thing that you're supposed to do. If there's a fire, you're supposed to acknowledge it. Um, but 
that would just stop the panel from beeping. You could go straight to alarm silence if you know that there's no fire. Um, reset, of course, just resets the whole system. If something is still pulled or still has smoke in it, then it will still go off again because it's not reset. And then here's your walk test. And then your two enable disable buttons I talked about before. Zoom out. Here's your transformer. And your transformer comes directly from right here, which I do have mine taped up so that I can't lift this up. But here's your new um, hot, neutral, and ground for the system. If you don't have the ground on there, I believe it'll make a ground fault. Um, right over here is your dip switches right here. Um, you could use something like a little screwdriver or a pencil or something to flip those up and down. And then, um, on the door of the panel, sorry, um, uh, what you can take off of the panel, um, uh, you have all your different things. So, silence inhibit, um, uh, auto silence. Temporal coding means that it'll be the NAC will be coded to code three, which isn't really that good because then your show will be coded to since this one only has one NAC. But it would be better if you had two, if you had the MS4. Auto resettable supervisory. That means if um, the tamper valve goes off and somebody opens it back up again, then it'll just shut off the supervisory and you don't have to reset the panel. Um, right here is where you can sit. The initiating device circuits, which are your zones, to um, supervisory or verification. Verification is um, if, and let's say a smoke detector went off and the alarms wouldn't sound, it would reset the smoke detector. And then if the smoke detector went off again, it would sound off the alarms. Um, I'm sure um, 7 and 8 on switch 2 would be used for something on the MS4. NAC 1 non silenceable, which means you can't silence it, and NAC 1 disabled. Of course, you have NAC 2 for that. Um, so, if you wanted to have NAC 1 for the strobes and NAC 1 for the horns, you don't want to silence the strobes and you just want to keep the horns going, then you could just set um, NAC 1 for non silenceable. And I'm sure that 3 and 4 would be used to repeat that for NAC 1 and NAC, I mean NAC 2. Here's your synchronization. No sync, you keep those switches off, 5 and 6. Synthesis sensor sync and Gentex sync and wheel lock. Waterfall combination circuit and then spare. So, um, yeah, that's basics of the panel. So, um, let's get on to the wire. Also, I forgot to mention that you should put in your batteries for wiring. Um, the panel will not turn on until it has power and then the batteries can send a signal to the panel. So see now that it's not on. Um, that's because it has a lockout feature. So starting off with our wiring, um, here we have the base for the Spectre Alert Advance. Horn strobes, which you'd probably be using on this system since it's fairly new. And, um, if you're going to wire up a spectral light vent since it can come off the base, you would go negative here, positive here, and then the negative leg of the resistor would go here and the positive leg of the resistor here. So that means that the positives here are always connected when the alarm is on, but when the alarm is taking off, then it will break the connection with the two positives. Which will send the signal back to the panel saying that, hey, your device is gone. So, um, I'm just going to wire up these two positive and negatives, and then we'll put the resistor on, and I'll show you okay, how to So, do that. here are your resistors. You will need three of these for the MS2, five for the MS4. So, as you can see right here, there's a gold stripe, and right at the end, there's a yellow stripe, and then in the middle, there it's a red and purple, so that's the kind of resistor you want to use. So, um, now that I got my focus on there, let's focus it back on the panel. Um, so, as you can see right here, what we want to do is we want to take the negative 
and pop it in the negative spot. And then take the positive and pop, pop it in the spot that's too down. Here you can see that's what it should look like with the negative to the negative. Um, and the gold is positive. So the gold goes to the other positive. And really quickly, I want to show you how smoke detectors are wired up. Here's your positive one and positive two. So the resistor jumps to the other one, similar to on the NAC. Now, on um, this uh, zone, this is zone two. It will not be in use. So um, I'm going to take the resistor and immediately put it on the panel. Quickly, I would like to put my resistor on zone two since I am not using it. Um, if you were using zone 2, then you'd have to put it on the last device in the line. There we go. Also, by the way, if you were going to use this as not the last device, you would have to take um, the second where we put the um, resistor, and this would just look like this, and the red wire would go to the next device, which is positive and negative would go to the next device too and that would keep going with one positive here one positive there and the negatives here until the end where you put the resistor across those two leads so for wiring this up to the system it is very simple all you have to do is do the simple um positive and negative to the screw terminals up there so i'm just going to wire that up Okay, so now that I have it hooked up to the notification appliance circuit, this um, is a two-wire device. This is the P2R. So that means, and plus we only have one now. So that means that um, I can do two-wire silence. So all we have to do is look at our chart. And you can see for system sensor sync on switch three, we need to have five and six. Um, five needs to be on and six needs to be off. But all you have to do is um, take a screwdriver or something and just turn it on and off like that. Now let's wire up our zone. Now I already have my zone pre-wired. Um, there is a resistor in there which means that if somebody were to rip it off it would come right out and then the, the panel would be back. Since this device can't come off the wall like and it still has a plate on it that means that there's just two screw terminals so it just um, goes across the two terminals with the positive and negative then that just goes up to our panel with the positive and negative so that um, the resistor can tell um, the panel that everything is good and when it's pulled it will signal back to the panel so all I have to do is wire it up to the positive and negative okay so now it's time to test out our work all we have to do is plug in the panel and we should have no troubles as you can see the only light that's on is the AC power light now that is because all the resistors are on the NAX and the zones, and since this zone is not in use, it does have a um, resistor on to tell everything is good. Anyways, now if I pull this pull station, um, everything will go off. Of course, there's only one device. Um, if we add a bunch of spectral advances, they would all be in sync. Once we hit the silence button, it will um, do two wire silence. So let's do a demo of that right now. As you can see, the strobe is still going. If I didn't reset this pull station, the panel would go back into alarm. But now if I reset it, it will just go back to normal. Hey okay guys, so that's going to conclude my video on how to wire up a conventional system, aka the MS2 or MS4. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you This video was helpful to a lot of people. Peace out.
myself. Can't you see myself?